Hello, boys and girls. Well, we're going to get off subject today for our other customers. We're not going to talk kayaks today. Today, we're going to talk about the owl boxes that some of you have bought or you're interested in buying. And just uh, a few reminders for y'all on uh, taking care of these boxes. Um, first, these boxes are made of 100% cedar, okay? The outsides are water sealed and you're going to notice I have two different style boxes here we'll get to that in a minute um, remember before December you need to change the bedding out in your owl box okay this is the bedding just pine shavings you can get it just about anywhere two dollar bag will last you probably five years okay all you have to do is pull this panel out it'll dump and you want to put five maybe six good handfuls of uh, pine shavings back in the box okay you want to do that once a year prior to December okay that just gets you set up for winter and you'll be ready to go for the nesting season all right so we're going to ask about these two different size openings that is the original box we had um, now all the ones we're doing are the round holes that was only by demand uh, my customers were asking me um, why don't you have the round hole we prefer the round hole so that's why that's the way it is I still will make these um, without that perch if you if you want one there was no difference in the nesting rates or the rates that the birds came and took over the boxes there was no difference in those um, and frankly you get better pictures with that one but this is the one everybody wants okay you're gonna notice this particular box here with these nice pretty colors on it every once in a while we'll get uh, a batch of good wood and uh, what I'll do is I'll build those boxes and set them off to the side and if people want to buy those as gifts I'll hold them for those people. Uh, I don't charge any more for those, but typically those boxes are held as, as gift items for folks. Okay? So, had a lot of people ask about squirrels. Haven't really had much of a problem with squirrels in our boxes. Um, I think out of about 400 boxes we put up this year, I've had six squirrels. Um, typically, if you get an owl, he's going to evict the squirrel okay now if you get a squirrel that is just hard-headed and won't bloody leave uh, you can go up and you can wrap on the side of the box with a paint pole a couple times and they'll run them out of there after two or three times typically they'll leave and won't come back worst scenario if you get one of these really hard-headed squirrels that just won't leave you can take a hose and spray inside the box and after a couple times he just won't come back um, I, pref I don't prefer that method, but if it comes down to that, go ahead and change your bedding out. As soon as he leaves, pull us out, leave the box open for a couple days, let it dry out inside, and then go ahead and change the bedding out, and you're ready to go again. Okay? So that's all you need to know about that. You're going to notice on the top of each box is four holes. These are for mounting the box. What you'll do is go up a tree, if you're going to do this yourself, you're going to go up a tree, you're going to run a screw in the tree where you want the box to be, and you're going to hang the box on this hole. Okay? After that, you need to level your box side to side, and then run this screw in all the way to secure it. And then these two screws, you can put it on the tree, and you can turn the box side to side, okay, and finally secure. And we give you those screws. They're uh, heavy-duty construction screws with Torx heads, okay? And that's all you really need to know about that. The big thing is you want the box as close to vertical as you can get it if you're going to do it yourself. Um, and you can allow five or six degrees tilting forward or backwards, okay? Uh, the big thing is you don't want to tilt it backwards too far because of rain which by the way we have going on right now okay the boxes do have drainage they drain out of the floor pans seals here um, a lot of boxes you see 
they'll they'll put like one inch holes at the bottom of the box for drainage um, if you have got that much water going in your box you have done something wrong okay so if you're going to install these boxes yourselves think about where you're going to put them okay having said that um, if you're going to install these boxes yourself it doesn't matter what direction they go in stop reading all that garbage online uh, the direction does not matter what they face what you don't want to do especially here in texas is you don't want the box facing west if it's in an unshaded area in the summertime because it'll just cook the box okay i mean the birds will leave it just gets too hot in the summertime so don't face it west if it's unshaded okay and typically uh, we have live oaks around here so shade is not a, a real problem the boxes can be mounted on fences i have one customer with three boxes on his fence all three boxes are occupied um, fence needs to be minimum of six feet high uh, eight foot or ten foot fence is better and you'd like to have 50 foot separation between boxes we've got them as, as close as 30 foot separation as long as the boxes aren't facing each other so you want the boxes facing away from each other or at least parallel okay and then you won't have a territorial issue with your birds when they're nesting okay one other thing on these boxes i get back here on the back they're all glued and stapled together, but on the back, on this back bar, you see these four screws. Those are safety screws to help hold this on. This is where all the stress is, but on this piece of wood right here. When you mount, that just helps make sure you don't have a failure in the box. All right. And the reason we don't put that perch on there anymore, on any of them, um, we had one box that got raided by crows and the crows uh, use that perch to raid the box so that's no longer available everything's going to be have that strap across the front of it okay so they're pretty user friendly guys uh, maintenance once a year if you go to maintenance the box and there happens to be an owl in there uh, just hold off just wait till he leaves uh, typically prior to uh, or when they're not nesting let's put it that way when they're not nesting they'll come in the box and they'll stay for a couple weeks and then they'll leave for a week or two and they'll come back and you'll get during the summertime you may have three or four or five different owls populate the box so uh, Thanksgiving is typically when people think about it so like I said, just change the bedding out once a year. That's it, that's really critical <clears throat> because they are really messy little animals. Um, you'd be surprised at the garbage you find inside these boxes. And the birds don't bring in any of their own nesting materials. Okay? If you put these in a tree, you want to be a minimum of 8 feet to about 15 feet. Okay, the sweet spot seems to be 10 to 12 feet. That's where we're getting the most populations of birds. Okay? And you'll read people that say, or you'll, you'll, you'll listen to people that say, I read, you know, it's supposed to be 30 feet in a tree. Don't go there. Just don't go there. That's stupid. Um, these are made for eastern screech owls. They're low flyers. They, they fly around and hunt at the lower part of the canopy in the trees. So if you walk through the tree, let's just walk through our parking lot here. We'll give you an example. That's the typical trees around here, okay? And that knot up there is about 12 feet up, okay? That's about where you'd want to put this box, right underneath that knot, okay? And then as you can see, they got a clear flight path in and out. The lower part of the canopy, okay? And if you, if you put the box way up in there, one, they're not going to see the bloody thing. And two, they can't get to it. So you want it to be obvious for them. Okay. One other thing we're doing now, 
we're showing our customers how to call in their owls. If you go, if you have a phone with a decent speaker on it, um, go to Audubon Society or to Cornell University, and if you can navigate their website, it's the best, but it's just difficult to navigate. And you want to look up Eastern Screech Owl sounds. And there's two sounds. There's a whinny and there is a trilling noise. Uh, go ahead and get both of those on your phone. The whinny sound seems to be more effective. So once your box is up, you want to come out in the evening, stand about 10 feet away from your box and broadcast that sound out in your neighborhood. Okay? Uh, if you don't have a good speaker, go ahead and drop a dime and get the uh, uh, a little uh, Bluetooth speaker for about 10 bucks so you can get some sound out there. Uh, if there's an owl, screech owl, within 200 yards of you, he's immediately going to respond to you. Okay? Um, so you want to make that sound for a couple minutes. Let them do their thing, do it again, and more than likely you're going to have an owl fly in on you and he's going to light on a branch somewhere near you. What you're trying to do is get him near that box so he sees the hole, okay? All he wants to do is see that hole. They don't care what the box looks like. The boxes are made pretty for you guys. This could be a bag of rocks with a hole in it and a screech owl is going to go in there, okay? So do that, and it's, you're going to have a better shot at getting an owl in your box sooner than later instead of just putting the box up and waiting for them to find it, okay? You're just kind of showing them where they're at. All right. That's about it, guys. That's all you really need to know about these boxes. Um, these owls are a little territorial when they're mating. So just be heads up on that. They won't hurt your pets. Um, these screech owls are about the size of a jar of peanut butter. I mean, I have people ask me if they're gonna haul the bulldog off. So I get some bizarre questions uh, about these little owls. Um, they pretty much eat small things, rats, mice, small snakes, lizards, bugs. Uh, they go crazy on June bugs when they come out. Um, so that, that's the kind of prey they are generally looking for. And honestly, I'd say 80% of the boxes I put up this year were for mouse and rat control, okay? Um, and I've got people that ask me, you know, are they gonna bother my other birds? Are they gonna, are they gonna bother, you know, my cat? And all? Well, here's the bottom line, guys. On the whole, these owls are in your area anyways, okay? They're, they're flying around every night. You just don't see them because you're on a different schedule. So the owl's already there. All you're doing is giving them a place to roost. The advantage you've got is in most neighborhoods, especially around here, around the Plano area, Texas, Dallas, areas like that, uh, all the old growth trees have been knocked down and all the old trees that are rotten with holes in them have been knocked down. So there's no place for these owls to roost. So they're desperate for a place to go to, and they're desperate for places to nest. Um, Y'all would be surprised how many of these owls I find in people's hedges alongside of their house because they just have nowhere to go. Okay. So uh, now these boxes are identical to our American Kestrel boxes we build. They're the, they're the exact same box. Um, typically, uh, we don't get kestrels. I think I've gotten two in two years. So they're just in a little bit different environment. They're more in open fields, places like that. Um, I did get one wood duck this year in my box. And the bo wood duck, the hole is generally shaped a little bit bigger. It's kind of an oval shape here. Um, but I had one wood duck that she was just determined to get in the box and she did. Now these box, these holes are three and a half inches. Um, industry standard is three inches. I put a three and a half inch hole because it seems like a little bit bigger hole, the squirrels don't like them. That's the same for that one down there. You can see the size of that opening. Squirrels just don't like it. There's no security in that. 
but the owls do like these. So if y'all have any other questions, feel free to contact me over YouTube or you can get me at tacticalyakin at gmail.com. You might be interested in kayaks too. Who knows? And you guys in kayaks. All well, you guys are naturalists, outdoorsmen. This may interest you too. So relatively inexpensive guys. They're cheap entertainment. They're great gifts for any age. And uh, I've had these up for four years now. Some of these they have not lost a house yet. Uh, when we install them, I guarantee them against storm damage. So it's free replacement. I haven't had to replace one yet in four years. And we've had a huge success rate. One other thing, um, the earlier you get your houses up in the year, the better your percentage rate is to get a nesting pair of owls, okay? Uh, and we, we did a little study on this. All the boxes I put up last year, almost all the boxes I put up last year, got nests this year. Um, starting in December, I had a huge rush on boxes, and that's when we started putting up these, these three or four hundred boxes. Um, about 40% of those got nests, and the closer I got to the nesting season, the fewer of those boxes got nests because the owls just didn't have a chance to find them. So if you're going to get a box, uh, get it up during the summertime or in the fall, um, and give the birds time to find it, and your success rate will be much, much higher. All right, guys. If you all have any more questions, feel free to write me. And I'm in the Dallas area, so I deliver these all around Dallas, Lake Texoma, places like that. I drop these off. So you all have a great one. Happy hunting. Hope you all get an owl. See ya. But wait. Don't go. There's more. I just checked my emails. I had a couple questions before we even got a chance to post this. I'm, I'm actually cleaning the shop up, putting things up right now. Uh, how big are the boxes? The footprint is about a foot square and they're about 15 inches tall. So they're larger than your standard owl box. Um, they're actually nesting boxes. Uh, one problem you'll have with some of these boxes you buy, they're small, they're long, tall, narrow. Um, the problem with those, you might get, you might get one owlet out of those, one chick but typically the eggs get crushed in those. So you don't have that problem with this box, okay? Uh, we've had as many as three outlets uh, so far this year. So there's that question. Uh, I think that's the only other question of consequence. Uh, people ask me what kind of predators do you have to worry about? You know, typical things, uh, rat snakes, nothing you can do about that. They climb trees, occasionally bobcats, but I really haven't had that problem. Um, and uh, obviously you guys that live up north or uh, maybe down in Georgia, Alabama area, um, occasionally you might get a bear get into one of these boxes and they'll just tear the box off the tree, but that's really uncommon. That's, that's sort of like a one in a million deal. So uh, thanks guys. Y'all have a great one.